strong, cohesive and effective team. Now, I may be biased in saying this, I, I probably am, but I think one of the things that military organisations around the world do extremely well is to create and develop those strong, cohesive and effective teams. I think it comes down to the risk, the risk that we experience as combat soldiers on operations. I know myself when I was in Afghanistan or Iraq and I was doing my job, I was patrolling around, I'd often wonder, is this step that I'm about to take, am I about to step on a landmine? Am I about to blow both my legs off? Worse still, am I about to step on a pressure plate connected to 20 kilos of explosive, kill not just myself, but my entire team? Is there someone waiting just around the corner with a rifle up to their shoulder, looking through the sights, ready to shoot me dead where I stand? I believe it's these risks that we face as combat soldiers which create those effective teams and strong leaders. We were there for not very long before we realised that it was a very high threat area. We're going to be pushing up, mate. And sure enough, another 100 metres down, as we came around the last building in the village of Derrick itself, we came under fire. Uh, I nearly got killed in the first minute of this firefight. I remember the bullets sort of striking in front of the ground, so they're kicking up dust in front of me straight away and, and skidding to the left and to the right of me. Uh, one of the guys was hit nearly ordered like straight away. I remember looking over to my left, and there's a heap of guys around the casualty, really big target for someone to start shooting at me. Uh, I made the decision that I needed to try and draw fire away from the casualty. Uh, so I've, I've run across the top of this, this hill to draw fire away and it's one of those crazy things that actually worked. If you give someone something to shoot at, they usually shoot at it. Something needed to change. Someone needs to step up here and do something. I was the commander on the ground. I had all of my soldiers firing on Taliban fighters that were assaulting us. I had the two LAVs engaging targets. Still weren't slowing them down. We had two Apaches on station, helicopters. 30 mil cannons doing strafing runs. They were still coming at us. I had no other options available to me. So I spoke to my Australian gunner. I said, mate, I need to give these guys that are trying to revive my mate time to pull him off the hill, to get him off the hill away from all of this fire. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to draw fire onto myself to give them much needed time to be able to drag him off the hill to get him to a helicopter. I still remember the look on my mate's face. He's like, you're going to do what? But I did it. I gave him the nod and I said, here we go. I stood up. I let everyone see me within a 500 meter area and start shooting at me as I moved to my right across the top of this hill. I probably ran 40, 50 meters. The sound of a bullet as it travels past your head is very distinctive sound. Something that I will never forget. It's like a whip cracking. The closer and closer it gets, it changes in sound. And I knew I knew I was pushing my luck for that first run. I came back up to my mate and I said, did it work? He go, yeah, it did. I said, I know it worked because they're all shooting at me. But it did, it gave my mate time. They, they, they dragged him off the hill a couple of metres. But as soon as I stopped doing that, all of a sudden the fire switched. It was like a garden hose from me back to him again. Or the guys, I could still clearly see my team trying to treat my mate. So I did it again and again. In total, I did four runs across the top of this hill, drawing fire as I dragged my mate off this hill, providing him CPR. It's one of those moments when I look back on and think, you know what, I could have been killed doing that. But I had faith and I had trust in my team that if I got shot, and I expected to get shot, I really just hoped that I got hit in my armour plate. We've got a plate front and back. I justified it by, well, if I get hit, hopefully it's in the plate. If I don't get hit in one of the plates, I have faith and trust in my team. They're going to be there. They're going to drag me off the hill and they're going to throw me on the chopper. That's the bond and the mateship that you experience as a combat soldier in the Australian Defence Force. 